My daughter Molly never excelled in the sciences, but it certainly wasn't for lack of effort. We watched her bravely take on biology, chemistry, and physics in rapid succession. I'm afraid they're all too logical for her. Not like poetry, where anything goes and then some. Don't be alarmed, she isn't gonna blow herself up. She's testing the blood of various men who might be the father of her child. Maybe I'm being nosy, but I'd kind of like to know too, just for my own information. It seems like a pretty big job for our Molly, but wait, she seems to have help. Evening, Mr. Hard. Great night for grave robin. Any preference on where to park the body? Over there, and hurry. Time is of the essence. Ordinarily, a drop of blood would turn Molly the color of typing paper. <laughs> but there she is, pouring and measuring, calm as can be. Let's be honest here. Molly isn't really a mad scientist. This is one of those fantasies that she likes to drift into. It confuses some people, but Molly finds that it allows her great flexibility in her personal life. She's having this particular fantasy on Halloween. How oh, apropos. What an imagination. Eureka! I've found it. Now that's attractive. ensemble. Thank you. Remarkably similar to the one you were wearing for your date last night, as I recall. Ah, well, um, <laughs> yes, it got a little late last night, and as I said to Nate, it's just silly. No, wait, I, you know, I really don't think I need to tell you anything. Spare me the sort of details, Miss Dodd. It's perfectly clear you're jet-setting and pub-crawling your way right into your third trimester. Dr. Spock would have some pretty severe words for you if you were to find out. Dr. Spock would be very glad that I am eating right, exercising, and getting enough sleep. I trust there won't be more gallivanting tonight, what with the holiday and all. No, I'm actually planning a rather sedate Halloween at home, thank you. And you will be your usual vigilant self, uh, building security-wise. Uh, actually, I'm off tonight. A man's entitled to a few stolen moments every decade with his best ghoul. <laughs> Been waiting all year to say that, have you? I started working on that one right after Labor Day. Anyway, I'm spending all Hallow's Eve with that certain special someone. Oh, well. Yeah, costume party. Hmm. Said to be the most notable of its kind since Truman Capote's mass soiree for the smart set in 67. Rumor has it the late President Kennedy showed up in a wheelchair four short years after his alleged assassination in Dallas. Who knows what this evening will bring? Who indeed? Uh, but see, the problem is, these days, there's only the finest line between trick-or-treating and terrorism, and I hate to think of no one on duty here in our lobby. Well, uh, not to worry, Miss Dodd. I have someone filling in. Wait a minute. You're not actually trying to convince me that there is another doorman. Someone as decent and trustworthy as myself. Uh, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, I gotta run. I'm sort of uh, late for work. Uh, this wouldn't happen if you woke up in your own bed, Miss Dodd. Well, believe me, a lot of things wouldn't happen if I woke up in my own bed. Hello, I am Irma. 
Well, uh, do we know each other, Irma? Not yet, but we will. I don't mean to be rude, but is there some reason why you're in my apartment and why you have rearranged all my furniture? I decorate for baby. You decorate for baby? Uh-huh. Oh, well, of course. You're the design consultant, my mother's birthday presents. The mother was here. The mother say she knows what you want even better than you do. Uh-huh. Well, that certainly sounds like the mother. All right. The mother say, since you never have time to decorate, we start from scratch. Okay, fine with me. I've just been waiting around the last 10 years for you to arrive. So, Molly, is anything you would like to bounce off Irma? Ah, well, and here is the mother herself. You're not trying to move in, are you? Don't sound so horrified when you say that. Oh. Nice of you to show up. I, no, wait, you're the one that's just showing up. I just ran out to pick up some Halloween treats. I knew you wouldn't have time with your busy little life. Irma and I have been here since 8 o'clock. When we all three agreed to meet? Yes. All right, I forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, I hardly feel like this is my apartment anymore. I mean, why don't you just tell Arthur you're staying at the plaza? You know, then he could send the articles of worship there. Molly, I don't want him to know where I am. But, Mother, I don't think he's going to give up. Then I may have to surrender. I can't hold out much longer. Huh. Now, I'm very excited about redoing your apartment. Where do we start? Well, lots of problem areas. Need bars on windows, or else baby pushes window open and jumps all the way to hard pavement. Baby gets hold on sharp knife. Trouble. Baby gets stuck on the refrigerator. You look and look and never find baby because baby too scared to cry. You know what I say? I certainly do. Um, if you'll excuse me, I need to go for a minute to get dressed for work. But uh, you two, carry on. Molly, Irma is making her presentation. Couldn't you wait? Mother, I have a job. I'm expected to show up on a regular basis. And I really don't want to go to work looking like this. What's the matter with you today? Oh, I don't know. I'm just a little apprehensive. I get the amnio results any day now, and Nate has finally agreed to take a blood test. I would think if he were the least bit honorable, he would have agreed at the start. Well, no, it wasn't him. It was both of us. Uh, well, I mean, there was a kind of Mexican standoff. I mean, believe me, he is more than honorable. Well, let's hope the honorable detective doesn't get a case of cold feet. Mm. No, he's supposed to see Dr. Rosenthal today, so... Then they can do the DNA match, uh, and then we can determine... Ah, uh, yes, blood test, DNA. Yeah, and determine who the father is. Well, this is a big day. Yes, uh, well, I've got to fly. Whatever you two decide is fine with me. Hi, Molly. Hi. Oh, what a relief. I thought I was late. Uh, what time is Sarah's party? Half an hour ago. This is it. In my office? We figured we wouldn't need very much room. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, I suppose I should feel honored. Hi, Bernie. Sylvia. Sylvia was in charge of the party. Oh. Nice party, Sylvia. Thank you. Uh, where's Sarah? I mean, this is supposed to be her going away party. Uh, she's cleaning out her office. I don't know it's taking her so long. Mm. Maybe she's crying. Let's face it, she never saw the axe coming down. She's not crying. She's getting ready to come to her party. Where she can cry. If she wants to. She'd better hurry up. I want to move my stuff in there. Well, are you taking over Sarah's office? Yeah. It's got a great window. Fabulous view of the park. Oh, well, uh, congratulations. Thanks. But there will be other times to celebrate. More appropriate times. This is a party for Sarah. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Bernie. Witch, old witch. Bernie. I, what did we get her, Sylvia? A walk. 
Very nice. She's probably got six of them stashed in the back of some closet. Everybody does. It was hard to get people to contribute. I wanted to get her a golf cart. Yeah, that would have been special. She could have driven it right off a cliff. Shut up, Bernie. I am doing my best. So, I bet you're glad you've rushed in for this. Mm-hmm. I think it's a fitting tribute to Sarah, though, don't you? I don't know. Might have a little more meaning if she at least showed up. Hello? She's right here. Molly, it's some doctor for you. Hello? Dr. Rosenthal. He did. Well, good. <laughs> oh. Well, is he all right? Yes, I know. He is very sensitive. <laughs> well, thank God you caught him before he hit the floor. Thanks so much for calling. Bye. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can I help you? I, I think I'm supposed to say that. Of course. You're the doorman. Uh, it's just for the night. I'm filling in for my dad. Uh, you're Davy's son? Guilty as charged. Uh, Jimmy McQueen. And you are? Molly, uh, Dodd. <laughs> Evening, Miss Dodd. Well, gee, uh, I can't get over this. I mean, you look so... I don't know. Clean. Clean? What's my dad been saying about me? Oh, uh, not a lot, really. Uh, just about your uh, troubles. It's been terrible. A nightmare, as a matter of fact. Well, I can only imagine. You want to know the worst thing? Sometimes it feels like it's never going to get any better. Oh, well, you never know. I, you know, I've had some very dark uh, moments in my own life. Um, <laughs> nothing really to compare with yours, and I, I certainly don't mean to demean the plight of people in your uh, situation, but uh, dark moments nonetheless. And I found that things just have a way of kind of working themselves out. <laughs> Two months. Two whole months since my last audition. I don't remember it ever being this bad. Uh, audition? <laughs> what exactly do you do? Hey, no auditions, no jobs. No jobs, no career, no career, no money. You're an actor? I really prefer to wait on tables, but acting's the only steady work I can get. <laughs> yeah, I'm an actor. Uh, I had no idea. See, Davy, well, that is your dad, he told me that you were, how shall I say this, uh, homeless. I, uh, I sublet and I house it for friends. Uh, like when they go to L.A. for the pilot season. Dad's miffed and owned my own place, so I guess to him I'm uh, homeless. Well, I am certainly learning a great deal about the veracity of our regular doorman. I suppose you weren't in Vietnam, oh, either. Oh, no, I certainly was in Vietnam. Oh, so he was telling the truth about that. Vietnam's where I caught the acting bug, as a matter of fact. Me and another guy and a major's daughter, we toured in Neil Simon's Star Spangled Girl. Neil Simon, well, you certainly did face some rugged action over there. Are you kidding? I'm still getting over it. Very tough audiences, very critical. I still have flashbacks about some of our earlier performances. Uh -huh. The reviews, generally positive, oh, especially for me. Stars and Stripes said, uh, Jimmy McQuinn's performance crackles like a firefight, lacerating the onlookers with round after round of lethal laughter until the aisles were littered with the helpless twitching remains of an audience ambushed by hilarity. Yikes. Armed Forces Radio they called it a quintessential comic performance uh, tinged with ambiguous of pathos. The Saigon Trib said, well, they said I was over the top. Who needs the local rags? Who, indeed? Yeah, I'm just glad you survived. I mean, those reviews can kill you. Well, my dad was right about one thing. It was overall a, a very difficult time in my life. Well, it was nice there was something your dad was telling the truth about. It's all true. W one way or the other, he just tends to kind of, uh, embellish. Mythologize. Stretch the truth. But never ever to lie. <laughs> ah, well, uh, nice to meet you, Jimmy. Night, Miss Dot. Watching everything. 
move you make. Are you brave enough to join me in the haunted house? <laughs> oh, it's you. Well, thank you. That's a fine how do you do after the day I've had. I'm sorry, Molly. It's just that... Well... What? I was hoping you were a little trick-or-treater. Well, how many have we had? None. They all stop at that damned haunted house, and they never come out. And look, 75 candied apples and no one to eat them. Mom, I, come on, it's just the city. I mean, nobody sends their kids out trick-or-treating anymore. But I have to tell you, I think you've done some excellent work here. And I hardly recognized you in that costume. It was different when you were growing up. In a real neighborhood, surrounded by the most wonderful people. The house would be full of little children. We had absolutely magical times on Halloween. Well, I don't really remember many magical Halloweens. Uh, there was one where you drove us around because it was raining. I, oh, and another, there was that terrible fight because Dwight wanted to go out dressed as Jesus. It was fun, Molly. Trust me. Every year it was fun. I think it's a shame you can't remember all the fun you had. I feel sorry for kids today, especially in the city. Where is the fun on Halloween? I wish they'd keep that down. No need to rub it in our faces. Aha! My first victim. Trick or treat! What are you supposed to be? A pirate. Can't you tell? What are you supposed to be? A postal inspector, like my dad. Huh. That's pretty scary. So I'm going to offer you a treat. Choose carefully. Did you make these? Of course I made them. I'm not supposed to dig any homemade stuff in case you put poison or razor blades in it. I'm going to go back next door where the action is. Do I look like a person who would hurt a child? Do I? Mother, I think you're taking this a little too much to heart. They're all over there. It's not fair. No, Mom, Ron and Ramona are having a party. It's a bunch of their friends from their neighborhood in Queens. How am I supposed to compete with Queens? <sighs> but these look very good. Mmm. Chewy? Aren't they? Definitely worth the struggle. We did have fun on Halloween. Sometimes. I'm glad you remember. It's just this Halloween... I don't know, you seem a little... A little what? Too involved. Hmm. Excuse me for wanting to be involved in something. It's too late, we're closed. Go across the road there to the haunted house. Mother! Trick or treat? Uh, can we help you? Candied apple? No, just drizzling, but it might later. Arthur! How did you know? I'd recognize that befuddlement anywhere. Not a bad costume, is it? Very convincing. Always pays to make friends with the girls in hair, makeup, and wardrobe. You're amazing, Arthur. I'm speechless. Yes, I know what you mean. These little shoes are killing me. You're the only trick-or-treater we've had this evening. Seeing you is the only treat I wanted. <laughs> oh, boy. Sounds like fun next door. Have you been? That haunted house is for deprived children from the outer boroughs, Arthur. Oh. Uh, how about a candied apple? Hmm, looks yummy. Haven't had a candied apple in years. Delicious. Definitely worth the struggle. <laughs> I must say, you look better in tights than any man I know. Absolutely. A great gams, Arthur. Thanks. I'd have done anything to see you again, Florence. So it seems. Well, you don't have to eat your candied apples standing in the hall, Arthur.
since you're probably the last trick-or-treater we'll get tonight, I'll just put these away. Romeo and the Pirate. It's getting a little too scary in here, even for Halloween. I think I'll go have a little chat with our new doorman. Well, I'll see you two lovebirds later. I see you out there. I'm watching every move you make. Are you brave enough to join me in the haunted house? I think I am. <laughs> <laughs>